The one question everybody has, what went down in the fantasy suite? Hey guys, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have Nick Vial from the Vial Files uh, interviewing uh, Joey and Kelsey, winners. Uh, they're both winners, right? She's his winner. He's her winner. They're both winning, right? As long as they're in love of this season of The Bachelor. And the one question everybody has when you don't know is, what went down in those fantasy suites? You know, some seasons you kiss and tell, some you don't. Zach Shell Cross's season, he mentioned uh, publicly to the world uh, on the show that he was intimate, and by that they had sex, with... Um, <clears throat> Gabby and Gabby, of course, felt super violated. Joey is not going to make those mistakes. He's not going to make these mistakes. Matt James said he wasn't going to have sex with anybody because he knew how dangerous it was. Of course, Clayton, uh, you know, mentioned he kind of uh, did the old shebang with multis, which is, hey, well, you know, everyone's allowed to do what they want. It's the recourse and the collateral damage that comes from that. Let's play this clip. Uh, and again, you got to uh, you got to understand that the whole interview leads up to this question by Nick. I didn't want to get to that process. So it was a meaningful conversation. I just, I sweat for about an hour. That was not fun. Uh, going into your season, a question for both of you. You can answer it separately. Obviously, overnight's fantasy switch is like a highly talked about thing. Every season's a little different. You know, sometimes they sexualize it. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Going into the season as the best. By the way, I like the mic flag here. I just would do something shorter, like a V or an F. Just, you know, V, just make it big because it's hard to read the mic flag. But uh, you see, you're seeing a lot of people do this with the Shure SM7B mics, which is put the mic flag underneath the mic down here. I mean, it doesn't look bad. I just, I think you could make your branding a little bit simpler. Hey, what do I know, right? Just uh, some podcaster here. Which, by the way, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I have spotted somebody wearing some podcaster merch. I brought a camera with me. Where's my camera? It's over here. I got this camera. I'll be taking photos and posting them on the Facebook uh, group page here of uh, the show. If anyone's got merchandise on, we'll be wearing it. All right, let's go. Basher, you know that you have the opportunity to have overnight sleep with at least three. You know that obviously if you make the final three, you get one. Did you set any boundaries for yourself? Did you decide, you know, did you open it up to like the willingness to be intimate? Did you not? Was it like, how did you guys go into that night with your expectations and your expectations kind of live out or yeah. did things change? I'll let you go first. You want me to go? I can go. Well, I just want to say, I think that Joey navigated fantasy suites perfectly, for in my opinion. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was. Sounds like you're not going to anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Not to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to give any more details on that. But <laughs> I thought he navigated it perfectly. Um, and yeah, I, I knew that we were going to talk about more, like, you know, our political views and things like that yeah, and like deeper pressing, combos. you know, issues that I guess that were make, maybe make or breaks for us that we didn't want to talk about on camera. We talked so much about all of that stuff. But yeah, I knew that he was going to spend the night with two other women. And even just thinking about him sleeping next to another woman, of you know, kind of bothered me. Um, but at the same time, I was like, I'm just going to focus on him and I. And I didn't ask. I didn't want to know anything about anybody else. I didn't uh, hear anything until afterwards. But uh, yeah, I think that he navigated it really well. And I just tried taking it step by step. I was deathly afraid of fantasy suites. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that yeah. feels like it's just like the death scent of every bachelor ever. So yeah, I, I think she touched on it really well on, I did think through everything. I was, I was doing my best to handle that situation. That's not easy as well as I could. And I do think it's important to highlight, like that is a very important night to talk. It's day. like, they're giving so many great quotes. She said, I knew he was going to spend the night with two other women. Thinking of him sleeping next to two other women kind of bothered me. Yeah obviously and you know what we're gonna get some ignorant person going don't you know what you signed up for shut up monica shut up okay what did you sign up for you know what i mean i say this every year and i'll say it again we all go to you know uh the great america uh, all american buffet or whatever the golden corral buffet we knew we signed up for the buffet and then we still shit our pants okay just because you know what you signed up for doesn't mean your body can process all of the things that run through it in this case emotionally speaking the emotional diarrhea that comes from ruminating over the thought of the person you're in love with spending intimate time with somebody else obviously things and that's what i really tried to focus on and yeah i handled it the best way that i could were there any <laughs> awkward moments in your conversations and overnights where either of you were like oh, didn't love that you know like oh new information I, you can speak on if if i felt like we were it was almost too good like we, it was, it was we almost too good and now listen 
uh, people have said, oh, Nick's jealous of Joey because he's so well loved. Maybe a little bit. I think that might be natural that there's a new, younger, better looking version of you that did what you did and they're more well received than you. You have to remember Nick when he was um, on The Bachelorette, he had that instance on After the Final Rose where he confronted The Bachelorette and said, if you, it, why did you sleep with me? Why did we have sex if you, I wasn't the, what, you know what I mean? Did that whole thing and did not come off looking good and, this and that. So obviously Nick had a different edit and he thinks the whole world's against him. And I don't think it is whatsoever. I think he's doing perfectly fine with this interview. But if Nick gets any chance through this interview to catch Joey in some sort of not lie, but make him look anything less than perfect, he would revel in that opportunity. It's not going to happen. Weird. Uh, Cause that is, it does happen. Sometimes you have those like weird, awkward pauses. Like this is kind of awkward. I don't know you that well, but we just, we talked and yeah. talked and talked. We just clicked. We were laughing a lot. Um, what we did during Fantasy Suites was like go through every week. And right. I was like, why did you do this? And, you know, like break down yeah. like little things and a whole synopsis. Yeah. And it was it was just fun to like, you know, re go through the whole experience together and talk about all that. I think I read like one of my journal entries to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, that was sweet. I was like, I'll she, go she's it. a ball of energy and I, I need my sleep. So I was also <laughs> like at the end, the fact that I was able to stay up to four or five a.m. said a lot for me because that's not usual. I would probably be already asleep. Yeah, by that knowing time. about him with his sleep now, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I was like, he really loved me. <laughs> I was like to stay up that late. It's necessary. <laughs> um, Joey loves his sleep. He's a he's a slept king. He likes to go to bed early and wake up early. Early risers, right? What was that thing that George Washington said? The sun never caught me in bed. Do I have the right president? It doesn't matter. When you told Daisy, not to, sorry to bring her up. Yeah, but yeah, when you were, see, here he goes. Joey, <laughs> Nick's like, sorry to bring her up, but I, I gotta I gotta sell some ads here. See, God, it's, it seems like you guys are all like yeah, we're yeah. chill and understand cool. a lot of, the lot of mutual thing. respect yeah. there. But <laughs> when you dropped or just in general, did you knew? that you kind of fucked up there? Man, I, I think what people saw was like, I was intentional with my words and almost to a fault unknowingly. And I, I looking back on it, I saw it. I'm like, yeah, like that was very obvious. And I'm happy about that because I tried my best to be real through it. But yeah, I mean, some people can look at that as me messing up. Others can say like, wow, he really was just trying to be honest and, and not trying to lead anyone on. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I respect that. Yeah. I mean, it was like when I was in your position at that point. Oh, I here we go. When, when, I, when I was your age. <laughs> it's like to be in Daisy's shoes it's twice. Tough. It sucks. And so I was very like self-conscious. I mean, to the point where I was very careful with my words. I, now it's not good TV. It's not good TV to do what Joey did, but it's good for his relationship. What's good TV is when you tell multiple women you love them, and then they go into the proposals knowing he said he loved me, and then all of a sudden he dumps you. You know, that's good TV. But we've almost had too many seasons in a row where the double I love you happened, and it kind of lost its luster. So I think it's good we're going back to Joey not overdoing that. And maybe in a couple seasons, someone will catch themselves in that kerfuffle again. I was not going to lead anyone on. Like I was, I, I was determined when I got done that the people I sent home, while maybe in the moment they would have been like surprised, but it would have made sense. Like they were never going to say, but why'd they fucking say this? Or why'd right. they fucking say right. that? That made no fucking sense. And so, yeah, I mean, I, when I say screwed up, I just mean from a show standpoint, yeah. it was like, I can just imagine the producers in the back being like, fuck! <laughs> like, because I, like yeah. Daisy's yeah. obviously seems to be a highly intelligent person who it's just she like, it. all right, like, it's yeah. not me. And and I think that's all you can do. And I, I do pride, I think, on the entire process. What I do love is both Rachel and Daisy leaving. Like, there was a mutual understanding. And I know that's not usual. And that, that speaks for them. And their character but also just how i think we tried to handle all of this no joey no it speaks to your character joey i and i understand he's not going to say it speaks to my character that they weren't upset at the end don't get me wrong rachel and daisy seem to be amazing finalists and they were finalists because you're amazing and the way you handled it joey was amazing they would have been messy if you were messy it's the law of attraction right so yes they were fantastic and that's all true what he's saying but what he's not saying is how good he handled it. He really did. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I was lucky. That's for sure. Could have went a lot of different ways. <laughs> All right. No, no more filming questions. That's thanks, for, thanks for indulging. It. Hey, us you know we got to we got to get into those questions. When it was sold to me that y'all were in love was when um, the viral moment where um, Joey said, "Oh, <laughs> say it again or yeah. say it louder." 
That say went, it again. Say it again. <laughs> that went viral. How many times have you rewatched it? I mean, like. Tell the truth, Kelsey. The Riz, the charisma. The I'm not going to lie. It's probably an unhealthy <laughs> amount of times that I was like, again. It was again. so <laughs> hot. It was so hot. It was yeah. so good. And in that moment, it was like, you know, it, I was just so engulfed in the moment. I was just like, oh, you want to do that again? Yeah. And uh, I remember afterwards, one of the producers was like, what the heck was that? Like she, like she was like, "Are you kidding me? Did you, did you just realize like what all he just said to you and all of this?" And it was, it was really special. But it was very nice, very happy for them, very special indeed. You can go watch the full episode on Nick Vile's podcast, Vile Files. And if you so happen to find this in Scottsdale today, March twenty eighth, I've got a show tonight in Desert Ridge, which turns out to be a really cool area. You can find me in the hotel by the pool, or come to the show tonight, seven thirty p.m. Desert Ridge. There are tickets left but there's over 150 people already bought tickets so i'm guessing it'll be close to a sellout which is more than i can hope for as you know some podcaster would all right thank you guys all so much for all that love and um we've got we've got more content coming to you on the afternoon patreon uh, the afternoon podcast bachelor rush hour that coming next